Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. We are at the church this evening, Janetta and I are leading together the, our prayers this evening. Uh, as we come to the end of the day, um, giving God thanks for his goodness to us today and preparing as we enter the night and for tomorrow as well as we prepare our hearts for communion and worship together tomorrow. So let's, let's begin with prayer. And um, I will re I'll be doing some of the reading. Janetta will be doing some of the readings as well. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make, make haste, haste to help us. us. Let's say the refrain together. God's love was revealed among us so that we might live through Jesus. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of God was revealed among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the expiation for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought also to love one another. For if we love one another, God abides in us, and God's love will be perfected in us. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. God's love was revealed among us, so that we might live through Jesus. And that canticle is from 1 John chapter 4 that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Amen. Your salvation is near to those who fear you that glory may dwell in our land. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. That glory may dwell in our land. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. And now we'll have the Magnificat and we do the refrain together and say the alternate verses. You, you have, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy. The promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father and, and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have looked with favor on your lowly servant. 
From this day, all generations will call her blessed. And uh, Jennifer is going to say our collect for today. Collect for today. O oh God, our protector, by whose mercy the world turns safely into darkness and returns again to light, we give into your hands our unfinished tasks, our unsolved problems, and our unfulfilled hopes. For you alone are our sure defense and bring us lasting peace. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so our psalm this evening is Psalm number 24. And uh, Janetta is going to lead that for Psalm number 24. Refrain, the Lord of hosts, he, he is the King, King of glory. The earth is the Lord's and all that fills it, the compass of the world and all who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and set it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Or who can rise up in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart who have not lifted up their soul to an idol, nor sworn an oath to a lie. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of Glory will come in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord who is mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of Glory shall come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of Glory. The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. O Lord of hosts, purify our hearts, that the King of glory may come in. Your Son, Jesus, our Redeemer. Amen. 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 And our New Testament reading, is, Janetta is going to read that as well, is Acts chapter 15 from verse 36 to chapter 16, verse 5, Acts chapter 15, verse 36, okay. to chapter 16 and verse 5. It reads, Some time later, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preached the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with them. But Paul did not think it wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and left commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. He went through Syria and Sicilia, strengthening the churches. Paul came to Derbe and then to Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was Jewish and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. The believers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him Paul wanted to take him along on the journey, so he circumcised him because of the Jews who lived in that area, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from town to town, they delivered the decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. 
So we, I mean, you can comment as you yes, see please. fit, but, um, but we have the situation where Paul and Barnabas, of course, we have got to the point where they are ready to go back on a second missionary journey. Uh, remember, this is their church in Antioch. This is their sending church. And um, they've decided that they want to go back to revisit some of the churches that they, that, they, that they planted in the first missionary journey about a year before. And again, Barnabas wanted to take um, Mark along with him, as they did the first time. <laughs> Paul disagreed, and there was this, this is a major disagreement <laughs> between <laughs> these two men. Paul said, Mark is not to be trusted. <laughs> he was with them the first time, and he left, he deserted them in Pamphylia and went back to Jerusalem. So they are not going to all disagreed so sharply that the two of them went their separate ways. Company. <laughs> yes. You can imagine the, 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 the heated argument and the conversation. But as somebody said, as one great theologian said, um, out of this disagreement, God got two missionary journeys rather than one. <laughs> and, and, and so sometimes, uh, because what happened was Barnabas and Mark went somewhere else to preach the gospel, whereas Paul took Silas and went somewhere else. So you had two missionary journeys instead of one missionary journey, <laughs> in, despite the disagreement. So, you know, God can use something as horrible as this disagreement for his purposes. Um, okay. So that's anything you want to say? That's no, no, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, so, so okay. So they went on, and um, so Paul and Barnabas split. So Paul now took Silas along with him, and um, they went. Well, of course, Paul went back to some of the churches he founded in the first missionary journey in Syria and Cilicia, <coughs> and we're told he went there to strengthen the churches. And of course, during this time, during this period, Paul had written some letters to these Christians as well. Um, he'd written the Galatian letter um, to the churches in Cilicia, which is in the area of Galatia, and, um, and so on. And then he came to um, Derby and Lystra, and he met Timothy, a young man, uh, probably around a teenager at this point, probably around 17, 18, uh, and he... Timothy was a, a believer, and, and we are told that Paul took him along on his missionary journey. But the important thing about this information is that Paul had Timothy circumcised. <laughs> now, it's quite strange, because in the previous chapter, we are told that some Jews came and said, unless you are circumcised, you can't be a Christian. And Paul opposed that, mm -hmm. and Paul and Barnabas opposed that, and the council in Jerusalem opposed that. And then here, Paul decided to circumcise young, young Timothy. Yeah. Um, why? Why would Paul do that? It sounds as if he's going back on his own argument that here is a, a Gentile who's half Jew and half Gentile, but he wasn't circumcised. And Paul decided to circumcise him anyway so that he could join their missionary um, endeavors. Why? Well, Paul believed that not just to preach the gospel, but you need to be practical. And there are some places he would go in the Jewish community. Paul's main task, whenever he goes into a community, was to go to the synagogue first. Now, if the Jewish people in that community knew that Timothy was not circumcised, that would become a problem for the gospel. Mm -hmm. That would become a hindrance for the gospel. <clears throat> and so Paul doesn't want that to become a hindrance for the gospel. Uh, the gospel has enough hindrances of its own. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> it's own to <laughs> exactly. So in, in, in accommodating himself to that situation, he had Timothy circumcised in order to 
uh, to not have conflict with the Jewish people to whom he brought the gospel. And it's a, it's a practical matter. It has nothing to do with theolo theology. Paul wasn't saying you must become circumcised no. to become a Christian. He's saying, you know what? I want Timothy to come along. He's going to, he's going to mentor this young man, Timothy, to be a pastor, to be an elder in the church, which of course we know Timothy become the elder in the church in Ephesus later on. But, um, but at this point, he said he wants Timothy to be circumcised so that uh, it doesn't become a hindrance to the gospel when he goes to the Jewish community and to preach the gospel. And, and, so, and so he had Timothy circumcised. Timothy clearly did not object, even though he was a young man. Um, uh, he did not object. He clearly uh, uh, acquiesced to this and, and allowed it. And verse 4, as they traveled from town to town, they delivered the dis decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. Remember the letter in chapter 15 that the elders in Jerusalem wrote to the Gentile believers and basically said, you don't have to get circumcised, you don't have to keep the law, but do, uh, do respect Jewish sensibilities in your area by abstaining from food offered to idols, immorality, and blood. And other than that, you're fine. So, so that is the letter, and that was the decision. And so Paul brought this along with him just to make sure that the Christians there are not, um, are not fooled into thinking that they are to become Jews in order to be Christians as well. All right, we can stop there. Yes. Uh, yeah, and we see this. This really strengthened the faith, yes. and the numbers in that area grew That's right. daily. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Exactly. So that uh, and um, uh, that's it. I don't, I don't, I don't, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's enough. All right. We're well, we're going to pray. So let's uh, let's spend a few moments in prayer. As we um we finish this night, as today we've been praying and, and uh, praying for those who are on our electoral roll, and so today I prayed for Johnson and his wife Surya and and their family. So we pray for Johnson and Surya and the children, um, and and um, ask for God's blessing upon them as a family. We ask that God will strengthen them, strengthen their faith, strengthen their love for each other, for their family, and for Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the people, the, the people who live on Forest Lane today. And so this week we've prayed for the people who live on Forest Lane, Dames Road, Station Road, Clinton Road, and McDonald Road. And we ask for God's intervention in the lives of these people. May God bring the light of Christ in their homes, uh, uh, in their lives, and, and may God not just save them and draw them to himself, but bring them healing and restoration and salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. And so we continue to pray for those we know, those in our own community, those in our church, who have asked us to pray for them. We remember them before God this evening. We remember um, our sisters Doreen and Pauline and others who are not well in our community. We pray for them. We pray for those in the nursing homes. We remember Jean and Walter and Monica and Auntie Jamie. And we pray that God will give them strength and uh, not just in body and mind, but in spirit, in faith. May their faith grow stronger even as their bodies grow weaker we pray that their strength and their, their, their faith will grow stronger and stronger in Christ we pray for for the the our world in which we live we today we remember the uh, the, the terrorist attack in America 20 years ago mm -hmm. so we think of all the terrorist attacks in our world not just in America but here in this country in Paris in Europe and in various parts of the world, in 
in, in Nigeria, in, 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 in Kenya, in so many places where terrorism uh, is, is making people's lives miserable and killing and maiming and destroying people. So we pray, Lord, against all forms of terror. We pray that you will protect people everywhere. We remember those who have died as a result of terror. We pray that uh, you will give um, the, their loved ones comfort, and especially today as we remember the situation 20 years ago in America, we pray for that those children and those who have grown up 20 years since to have learned of this situation. We ask for your, for your grace upon them and all others who might be suffering today from the acts, from acts of terrorism in our country, in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And um, let's say our night prayer. <coughs> Start with that. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let's do this one. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work, or watch, or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give, weary, give rest to the weary, Bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, and shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Amen. Be your light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our Father, the day is over and we turn to you before we take our rest. You have been with us all the day long and for all your mercies, perceived and unperceived, we give you thanks. Of all that has been amiss in us, in thought, word and deed, we repent and ask your gracious forgiveness as we also forgive all who have offended us. Grant us now the blessings of a quiet mind and a trustful spirit, the freedom from fear of a child in his father's house. So let, uh, let us rest in you, at peace with you, and with all people. Amen. Amen. Oh, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and rest tonight, sisters and brothers, as you sleep. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed night, one and all.